Guys, Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today I've got an excellent one for you. So, someone sent me this video, I think it was through an email or through Facebook, regardless, it doesn't matter. And um, usually, you know, some people send me these quack things or whatever, or these conspiracy nuts or what have you, and usually I kind of just avoid them a lot of the time. For the simple fact is that. Um, you know, they're not usually based on what this channel is about. But seeing as though that this is about Formula One race cars run on compressed air, um, I, I couldn't not touch this. So this is absolutely awesome. So this video is done by a guy or a channel called a plain truth info. Obviously not truth, it's all bollocks. But um he's also hosting another guy in this video. So what we'll do is we're just gonna run through it. This is that Jones guy, and he's awesome. Hey folks, and welcome to another video from a plain truth dot info and questioning everything to find truth. Uh, again, Jones, Joe S is doing an amazing job explaining F1s, how they do not run on fuel. Here's the... <laughs> how do they not run on fuel? Any road. So... Basically, this video was done uh, last year, or the end of last year, or the beginning of this year, I can't remember exactly which, and it doesn't really matter. Number one is, he's going to use a, basically, a very simple picture, as you can see, you know, it's kind of like a child's drawing, and it's from 2009, 2010. This is important because, um, uh, later on in the video, he's going to use examples of more modern Formula 1 cars, not from 2010, but more, for, you know, a more up-to-date one, should I say. Not only that, as you can see, the fact that they've changed the fuel tank size means they've also had to change the wheelbase size. But anyway, let's crack on with this fucking moron. Fuel tanks and the purple showing how in the F1s they increased the size of the fuel tanks in 2010. But when we get into it, they're saying that there's 45 gallons of fuel. Now, this might have been true with the 45 or 205 uh, litres or the 45 gallons. This might have been true for the 2010 one. Basically, they removed the pit stops and all the rest of it, so they have to carry all the fuel on board. But uh, the 2018 rules, so if we go to the F1 site, so this is the F1 site, f1.com. Uh, if you look at the new regulations, what they are saying is that the cars carry 105 kilos of fuel for each race. That is, And they can carry no more than that. Um, now, fuel weighs a bit less than water, um, so it's 0 0.77 uh, kilos per litre. Water is one litre, is one kilo. Um, so when you, obviously there's more because fuel weighs less. So when we work this out, basically, uh, these new cars for 2018 um, carry 136 litres or thereabouts, depending on the weight of the fuel. But we'll carry on with what this guy's saying. Or 205 litres in these little tiny cars that go 200 miles an hour look where the f <laughs> tiny cars are you shitting me so let's just say this guy's feet to his helmet there let's just say he's one meter 80 tall and he's bent over like that let's just say this is a meter and a half so there's a meter and a half there to his feet there's a meter and a half there that's three meters there's a meter and a half to about here so that's um four meters four and a half meters and then there's this extra bit so these cars are literally getting on you know three meters there another two meters there these cars are getting on to five meters long that's not small what the fuck is he talking about fuel is right behind the driver right under the air intake valve according to the f1 di diagrams and schematics and if you take so he hasn't looked at F1. That's a diagram, yes, but it's not a schematic. Now he's going to start banging on about the size of intakes and exhaust intakes or whatever he wings on about. What I want to draw your attention to is the size of this fuel pipe here. This is when they used to pit stop, obviously. You can see them you know, change the tyres and what have you. There's the stop sign. But look at the size of this um, fuel nozzle. You know, this massive fuel nozzle here. And look at the size of the fuel pipe. We'll get to that in a second. A look at a Formula One driver sitting in a car. He's no more than just a two to three feet above the ground at most. And behind him is the air exhaust. And look at the air intakes on each side. Air intakes everywhere on the top and on each side because they run on compressed air. But look at, they're supposed <laughs> <laughs> so basically what he's saying is I can't see how they fit this much fuel into these cars therefore they must run on no fuel whatsoever and they run on compressed air um, alright so air has been sucked in through this intake here and these intakes on the side um, but what's doing the compressing you fucking muppet what does it, you know, he, he starts winging on about look how much air 
um, these cars are swallowing basically. So, why does that matter? It's to be the equivalent of a 45 gallon barrel drum sitting behind the driver. Equivalent. Now, we must say equivalent because he keeps on saying for, there is a 45 uh, gallon drum. And along with the engine and the transmission and everything, give me a break. Fuel, you and I get pumps. The petrol is petrol and it's highly flammable. So, this uh, video clip is from the other guy's video, that Jones or whatever his fucking name is. That's the point of the stuff. In races, F1 cars must now carry all their fuel from the start. 200 litres of petrol. 200 litres. I'm sure he just said 200 litres. Let's just double check that. No, he did. You don't have to repeat it. 200 litres of petrol travelling at 200 miles an hour. That is quite a missile. That is utter lies. And I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> then, behind Kivitza, we've got the... So before he goes on, obviously this is a more modern car and they're showing you the bladder and all the rest of it, but the shit that comes out of this guy's mouth is amazing. Fuel cell. Lots of different compartments. Bollocks. <laughs> I'm telling you now, that is bollocks. <laughs> Why? Right. And conveniently, the engine's not in it because, oh, I should tell you in a second. And that's to make sure the fuel doesn't kind of swish around when the car's going along. So just in front of the fuel cell is this part, that's at his seat as well. So I'm going to leave that there. Perfect. Now, it wouldn't be F1 without a little bit of secrecy. And there is a reason why there is a board over this part, the engine. The reason is so we can put this mock-up bollocks tank in front and make you think that's where fuel goes into this thing. What a load of bollocks. <laughs> no, dickhead. Number one is this is a cross-section of a car. So if they cross-section the entire engine, then the other race teams will be able to see exactly what it is. They'll analyse this video and they'll be able to see exactly what tricks uh, BMW or McLaren or Ferrari are doing. They're trying to keep this secret so that you don't see what's inside them. That's why they've also blanked it off. They also don't want to see all where all the fuel lines and all the rest of it goes. That's why they've got this out exterior um, printout on this piece of plastic. Fucking moron. <sighs> gets worse anyway it's a v8 he's right it was made by bmw and they could technically still sell one of these so no peeking but i can show you an so i looked over uh fuel tanks for f1 systems and came across this race car engineer site and one of the things i immediately noticed is they don't show a full car all they show is the bladder fuel system with a cell tank located behind the driver but why does he think they have to show them the whole car? And like I say, a lot of this stuff is secret. You know what I mean? Like I say, they're trying to keep this stuff away from the other teams. Go on, carry on, dickhead. But in front of the engine, large leak-proof flexible bladder made of military-grade ballistics to contain all the fuel during a race, 230 litres of fuel. Uh, and then here is the fuel bladder, apparently, with the pumps that pump it out. He bangs on about this plastic fuel lines thing. The fact of the matter is this is a mock-up, right? That is one of the things. The other thing is as well is that the, the why can't you have plastic fuel lines? It makes no sense. Now, this does look a bit crude and all the rest of it, but this might be uh, air vents, this might be all sorts. The main air vent I can see is here, but we're not entirely sure what this entire system is. But anyway, it could be uh, coolant, it could be bypasses for coolant, it could be where they actually take the samples because the FIA... Um, basically have to take a litre of fuel as a sample. But anyway, moving on. Uh, but again, you don't see the full car or anything. Just this little bladder section behind the seat that supposedly is holding all of the fuel, some more than 20 gallons to four. So here we have a diversion of people being stupid. So we've got the guy who's talking right now, the American guy, who was even more stupid than the other guy, which I didn't think you could do. But <clears throat> he says it's pumping four gallons per mile at 200 miles per hour. No, it's not. Where the fucking hell did you get that from? We'll see where he got that from in a second. 40 to 50 gallons, depending on who's saying it. But there is no pictures of the full system in place here. Um, it's a Formula One cars here, and I just want you to, sh to show you the flow rate. <laughs> how much this is <laughs> litres per second. Yeah, it is. They're claiming they put into these cars. So there you are, 11.97. So nearly 12 litres a second is going into the fuel tank. 
I don't see why this is incredible. What this is demonstrating is when they refuel the cars, the FIA basically set a limit on this. So when they used to do pit stopping, basically, if um, it was unlimited, then different um, manufacturers or different race teams could then pump as much fuel as they could physically get in. So this is limited. It's limited to this number. And basically, this guy is just demonstrating the fuel pump that pumps fuel into the cars when they pit stop is at 11 litres a second. And the motor speed is not the engine speed of the car. It is the pump speed. Fucking retard. Let's onboard this. When the fuel's finished, you will have figures that will tell you the motor speed and a fuel flow of 12 litres per second. All right, so I wanted to find out how many miles long is an F1 car race, the smallest number of complete laps that exceeds 305 kilometers. 305 kilometers works out to 189 miles. We know the Indy 500 is 500 miles. So 189 miles, well, how much... <laughs> the Indy 500 is 500 miles. Well done, genius. ...fuel is consumed. Well, the average race fuel consumption in an F1 car is 75 liters or 4 miles per gallon. The average length of the lap is 5 kilometers. All right. And again, the average total race distance is 300 kilometers. All right. So here we take 189 miles in a race, 189 miles, and divide it by 4 miles to the gallon. And we get 47 gallons of fuel that must be in these F1 cars. Incredible. He knows how to use a calculator. And so this again is where they say the 45 gallons of fuel is stored right behind the driver, right below the air intake valve. And then we get some pretty pictures of drums. <laughs> All right, so 45 gallon <laughs> drum here. Remember, it's 47 gallons, they're saying, are fit in these tanks. As you can see from these tanks, there's no reference. There's no scale. There's no can of Coke. There's no, you know, there's no anything. So he, he has no idea how big these tanks are. He's just looking at them thinking, well, that's the size of, I don't know, a bottle of vodka. Tanks not made of steel, but some Kevlar material that protects us, crashing it at hundreds of miles an hour. And it's right behind the driver's seat, supposedly a 45-gallon barrel drum. It's not supposedly, it's there. And number two is, they're not putting a 45-gallon drum in the back. Fuck's sake. Drum is sitting right behind there on some Kevlar bladder that we're supposed to think is where they put the fuel. Kevlar um, bladders, basically uh, composite material bladders that expand and contract with size, have um, been used extensively for donkey's years through the military and uh, aviation industry so he, he's, he's so choked up on the fact that this could possibly exist it's just fucking awesome but in actuality these things are running on compressed air <laughs> there we go again oh my god what I don't understand is so let's just say they're saying there's 200 litres in this tank, we'll go with him let's just say there's 200 litres in this tank so he thinks there is no way 200 litres can fit in there, right? So let's just say they're lying full... That means they're lying full stop. Maybe there's 150 litres in there. The fact of the matter is, is why would you go from there isn't enough space in there, or I think there's not enough space in there, to it runs on compressed air? I don't know where you've met that jump. Just like jet engines. So a U US liquid gallon weighs 8.345 pounds, if we no, a US gallon doesn't weigh um, uh, 8.34 pounds, you idiot. A US liquid gallon of water, you fucking moron. Multiply 8 times 45 pounds, we're going to get something that weighs over... Let's do the math here. Let's do it. Let's uh, let the calculator do the math. 4 times 45 pounds. Let's see if my math is right off of 360 you didn't do the math. pounds here. At a weight just in fuel alone in these cars, in these Kevlar few military grade supposedly fuel batters that weigh 45, that's uh, equal to a 45 gallon drum. Now look at the size of this guy. So <laughs> he's only 30% off, but who cares? I say he's six foot, and behind the cowling of the air intake is supposedly a 45 gallon drum. Are you kidding me? Look at the air intake vents, folks. Oh, it's got the. There isn't a 45 gallon drum. That's Tiffany Dell, by the way. Um, there isn't a 45 gallon drum behind there, you fucking moron. 
<laughs> Transmission and the engine behind it too. Where do they put the fuel? Where do they put the fuel? In that bladder that you've shown us. And just because you show us a car that you have no idea how long this fucking thing is, doesn't mean that it's impossible. <laughs> It's all a bunch of bollocks, as Jones Jones S is telling us. All a bunch of bollocks. All right, evidence, mate. Weirdly enough, I'm going to show you some evidence in a minute. So we can get a uh... so he yaps on about top fuel dragsters and all the rest, of it, and then he shows us these, and what he says is just golden. Twenty five gallons, which would be uh, half as big as an F one. And look at the tanks, folks. They're made of steel. That looks like aluminium to me, you dickhead. <laughs> Remember the other one? Rubber bladders? Are you kidding me? Nope. In the Formula One race cars, they're using rubber bladders, but it yep. in dragsters, they're using steel and a heavy metal containing fuel tanks. Cause one, heavy metal. That was awesome. Number two is, do you realize how often dragsters blow up? My God. Because they're flammable? Give me a break. There's no I'll fucking break his neck. Fuel in the F1 cars. Here to subscribe. Right, so hang about. We've gone from dragsters do have fuel to Formula One cars don't. Fucking genius. This time we're going to look at the air horn. The air horn is a device which takes the air from the roll hoop. Now, with this guy's rationale, this means that Formula One cars are not even air compressors, they are actually musical instruments. Supplies, supplies it to the engine. It's quite a critical design in that it has to integrate into the roll hoop. Well, it does because it's an air compressor, obviously. Also, not get affected by the driver's head and distribute the air evenly in between the cylinders in the engine. I love this giant point he's making. Distributes air evenly into the engine cylinders. Yes, that's what you need. You need oxygen for combustion. <laughs> this is it's just genius. Also not get affected by the driver's head and distribute the air evenly in between the cylinders in the engine. Well, giant compressors need air. And this thing, it's just... It's, it's, it's Mickey Mouse is not a word for it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> no evidence why. I'll go back... Um, to this one here, go this way. This is the other side. So you've um, the other side here. It looks like an intercooler radiator thing here. Again, another good shot there. Show Look, it actually uses shells, not air. Showing you that it's the uh, just a cover for where the air comes into the engine, and there's a bit of gold. <laughs> bit of gold? <laughs> Don't you mean a bit of insulation foam? <laughs> God help me plate in here which you get on the McLaren F1 um, is it the F1P1 or whatever it is um, and let's have a look more shots here as I say weirdly enough that is actually the fuel tank it's all engine and then at the back you've got the transmission and bit and you've actually got a man in there which basically means it's like the Flintstones you can see this dude in there he's in the back you can see his arm look so basically there is no engine it's just men that basically pedal these air compressors Bob's but um to drive the wheels at the back and there's a radiator at the side there but there it is there's the air intake it's massive yes there it is massive it needs to be because it's it, it's sucking and burning this air <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be massive because it's sucking in and burning air fuck's sake whatever you do don't spark up a fag right now because the air around you will combust right so he starts going about helicopters and stuff and i might do that because aviation was where i started out my uh, career but uh, that's even it's even better and that's probably for a different time however let's actually go back to um, what these guys have been honking on about like idiots so usefully they use this picture which is actually like i said this is this cutaway that she um, was that bit of totty was um, stood in front and all the rest of it and if we actually look at this I want to quickly just talk about a few of the features because they're quite interesting so number one is you have the steering wheel here you can see this and you can see that that's a carbon fiber shaft you can see the uh, universal joints there and the knuckles and all the rest of it and then the steering the rack um, the power steering system here it's a hydraulic system um, <coughs> You can also see where the pedals are for the feet and all the actuators and servos and all that. There's a bit of electronics here, which is probably to do with um, the fly-by wire system. A lot, like I say, Formula One isn't my thing, so I'm just guessing here. I think that could possibly be oil or maybe coolant or something. You can see there's a probe in there, a sensor. 
you can also see here this diffuser you can see the hinge there and this um, front air scoop oh, that's what I'm going to call it um, you can see that there's these actuating actuation rods here so basically obviously this thing can move up and down and change its angle of attack um, there's some more ECUs and gubbins here um, you can actually see the crash protection harness here around the driver and obviously his feet go down there so you can see his heads up here somewhere and then his feet so one interesting fact is the fact that you properly laid down in a Formula 1 car like actually I didn't realise how much you laid down um, but you can see that this is where the harness is you can see the buckles there so he actually sits there with his ass down here and his back running up the back here there's some more computer wizardry here and then we actually look at the fuel bladder you can see that the engine's been blacked off like i said they're probably not going to chop an engine in half um but you can see there's fuel bladder and this looks like some vents this carbon fiber here looks like some vents so basically um i don't really think this is a collapsible tank I think this is as the fuel is used and it gets to a certain level, maybe that's what this pipe work is for, that um, it vents from down here so all these bladders will empty evenly and then they don't collapse under air pressure, stuff like that. This is just a guess. You can also see there's a lot of heat insulation here. Uh, this is probably because the fuel is really quite cold and um, they'll chill the fuel down so basically they have a smaller tank. And this insulation... Um, aluminium insulation like honeycomb stuff i imagine is to basically so the driver doesn't basically fucking freeze to death um as the as he's basically riding around and all of this so there's quite a few interesting shots but great this is actually a great demonstration um and what we can do is we have the fi and rules here so this tells us what kind of tank um the specific exceeds it has to conform or exceed the specifications of this ft F ft5 1999 so the tank supplier is a company called atl and uh there's atl's tank this is i don't know what year this is or anything but this is what they used in their videos debunking the the air compressor formula one bullshit um so we've got a good 3d image of this engine so what you can do luckily enough is in the rules these uh, technical specs if you go down to the bottom there'll be a link in the description to all this shit you can see that they have these appendix with all these drawings and stuff where the driver's helmet should be how big the aerofoils even crank stuff and all the rest of it there's actually not too much but this is absolutely excellent because we have the dimensions here of um, where the, the back of the seat is uh, my mouse is kicking out uh, where the back of the seat is and these pad positions i think this is where they have like cushions or pads or something so if the driver's head nods around then it's going to smack into the side it also just gives you all the dimensions from the reference plane which i imagine is the bottom of the car so what we can do is we can use these and we can superimpose um, these drawings over the top of this uh, cross section of this formula one car and as you can see um it's worked out beautifully you can see all the angles and stuff and you can see that the back of the seat uh, the compartment from the cockpit that separates the cockpit to the the rest of the car you can see that that line exactly follows there so obviously they're following the rules which is a good thing you can also see the top of the trim line there and then the top of the trim line there is all matching up so this is good this is excellent because this gives us a reference um, that we can use so what you do is you take this reference and we can put this into SolidWorks. So you can see here I've basically just imported this drawing. And what I've done is I have made, I've scaled one to the other. So if we um, just draw a box. Oh, I've got to do the plane. Sorry, I'm messing around here. Front plane, there we go. If we draw a box pretty much that size, that's near enough, isn't it? to that size there like so and we measure this like so you can see that we're getting yep 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 uh, 146.69 this is millimeters so you can see that this is meant to be 950 and we're you know we're what three three point three millimeters off so for this scale that'll easily quite do us discard that so <clears throat> what I've done is I've taken this and I've basically traced round pretty much this tank. There's a bit I missed at the bottom, but I've traced round this tank. I've made a profile of the tank, as you can see. So if I make that disappear, you can see the tank in there. We can see this bladder. It's this Kevlar kind of yellow colour, so we can quite easily see it. And if I make, oh, make that reappear, make that reappear, 
There we go. So I've basically traced around this tank. I've missed out a bit, but we'll live. And then what I've done is, is I've extruded it. So I've basically pulled that shape out from this plane in both directions. Now, there is no specs that I can see that shows us the, the size of this tank um, in the Z. You can see that our axis Z there um, in the Z. But what I did is I used my nouns instead of just bullshitting like a ranting lunatic and looked at some of the other specs. So this is a cockpit entry template. So basically this is the hole that is in the top of the car. Now this has to be obviously um, controlled by the FIM because they are worried about uh, fire safety. There has to be enough room for the driver to be able to get out. Hence why they have the um, steering wheel that can detach so it doesn't basically um, impede them if they need to get out of the car quickly. And as you can see there, it says 520 millimeters. Um, inclusive of either side of the car center line so i basically chose 600 millimeters or 60 centimeters um, for the width of this tank thinking that that's you know not ridiculous that's only um, four centimeters either side bigger than the hole in the cockpit so i think that's not a bad um, approximation so if we measure this from that surface there to that surface there we get a measurement there of 600 millimeters that's how big this is. I shouldn't really use smart dimension. We can use uh, the evaluate. That's what I meant to do. So if we click on, not that surface, that one, and we click on that one, you can see there quite clearly that's 600 millimeters, which in, is in keeping with what I would imagine that it would look like. So what we can do is we can go to mass properties, and this basically tells us our part size, and it says that our part here has 600 litres, 160, not 600, <laughs> 160 litres. And if it was basically full of water, at one uh, kilo per litre, then it'd be 160 litre, uh, 160 kilos, which, you know, makes sense. Because the new rules say that there's 136 litres thereabouts of fuel in these things. But you might argue that this tank has all these cutouts and there's bits missing and then there's this little yee-haw in the bottom and all the rest of it. So with a little bit of artistic license, I basically, uh, because I don't have the exact specs, I basically made it look like it. So like that, you see, so I've shaved off these top bits so and then removed this bottom section here. So I think that's a pretty good approximation to this fuel tank size. If we now go to the properties here, Oh my God, look, 138 litres, where 105 kilos of fuel, which is the new rules for 2018, would mean that you require 136 litres. So I am give or take two or three litres. And because I don't have the exact specs, and because I'm also missing this little horn here, that's quite easily fit in there. So these guys are talking absolute fucking trap, obviously, and that's what's also fun about this. You know what I mean? These guys, unfortunately, have no idea of spatial awareness. Um, I actually looked it up. The human body, or the average human body, has a volume of around about 95 litres, uh, depending on your size, but a 95 kilo person, on average, would have about 95 litres. So you could fill yourself with 95 litres of fuel. Um, and this is 138 and again, if we just measure this just for clarification, we take the widest part, which is there, like so, there, 600. If we go from the top to the bottom, from there to there, that means this fuel tank would be the green one, which is uh, 78, so 79 centimeters, which is, you know, just short of a meter. I say just short, quite a bit short of a meter. And, uh, you know, that's up to my waist type thing. It's not massive. So, um, yeah, absolute fucking rubbish. These complete fucking idiots are just banging on about stuff that they don't understand just because, you know, they have no spatial awareness. Just no spatial awareness whatsoever. So all these pictures that they've given them and all the rest of it, do a bit of maths or just try and work it out instead of being a complete moron. It seems that Del Boy is actually in good company of people that just don't know what they're fucking on about. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I say, this thing here, I think that's a, a, a fair enough representation. I'd love to, you know, I'd love the guys to see this, the two guys who have done these these videos, these collaboration videos or whatever. Um, I'd love to see them argue their way out of this one. So there you have it. There's a, I think is a, a quite fair and um, 
telling representation of exactly how much fuel you would be able to fit in these things just because they don't know their fucking arsehole from their fucking ears you know doesn't mean that people are talking complete absolute tripe one point i want to add about all these conspiracy theories like these cars running on compressed air i would love to hear their explanation of exactly how that happens um but uh you know, the thing is, you have to do your research and you have to have some kind of awareness of the world around you. Just because you can't envisage it doesn't mean that it's not true. And how you go from saying, there's no way there's 200 litres in there and therefore it must be compressed air is absolutely amazing. One thing I want to add quickly, very quickly at the end, is that the whole point about conspiracies full stop. You know, conspiracies do exist. Um... But generally, there has to be a massive driving force for a conspiracy to even take place. You know, um, the Bay of Pigs incident with Kennedy, stuff like that. Why would Formula One want to lie? Just imagine if they had a tank and it had 150 litres in it. Why would they then fucking lie and say, oh, it's got so much? You know, why would you, why would you do that? You know, it's like, obviously, that cars can run on compressed air. They're just selling us fuel just for the fucking sake of it. Well, why stop there? You know, uh, you know, secretly, you're, you you put fuel in... You, you know you put fuel in your tank on your motorbike or your car or whatever. And obviously, when your back is turned and no one else is watching, that engine is ditching that fuel on the roads drop by drop. <laughs> Hope you had a laugh out of this. This is great fun. And, uh, yeah, and I've tried to cram in a, a few bits and pieces as well. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.